In the last two sections of chapter 5, we're going to look at a couple of different laws that allow us to solve uh, non-right triangles. Um, we call these oblique triangles. The, the first of these two laws is called the law of sines. It will work for a couple of kind of special case uh, triangles depending on light. Special cases and what information you have to start the problem with. Um, and we'll also look at uh, using the law of science to kind of solve some real world application problems. Again, not involving right triangles. So law of signs, what is it? If we have um, if we have a triangle and we label the angles A, B, and C. Uh, the sides then are lowercase letters a, b, and c across from their respective sides. So that's no different than how we kind of set up a uh, right triangle anyway as far as labeling uh, angles with capital letters, sides with lowercase letters. Uh, Law of Sines states the following fact is true, that the sine of angle a divided by A, that ratio is equivalent to sine of angle B divided by B. It's also equivalent to the sine of angle C divided by C. Or the reciprocal is also true. A divided by sine of A is equal to side B over sine of B, that's equal to side C over sine of C. This is law of sines. Of course, we don't write or, or solve equations that have two equal signs. So like, you know, any part of this makes, uh, makes an equation that you can then solve. If you know three parts, you can solve for the fourth part, uh, kind of using any pair of ratios. Well, one type of triangle that we can solve with law of sines is one in which we're given an angle angle side setup. Um, so let's draw this out. You can draw it to scale, you cannot draw it to scale, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this says angle C is 102.3 degrees, so you might try and draw an angle that is noticeably obtuse. So maybe you put this as angle C, it's 102.3. Uh, we just need one of these other two to be B, doesn't matter, so let's call this B, 28.7. And so that leaves this to be angle A. We don't know it. Uh, what we do know is side B. Side B must be set up across from angle B. So this is side B over here. It's 27.4. So by saying we have angle, angle, side, we have angle, angle, side, kind of consecutively uh, going around the triangle. So to solve this triangle, we need to find the other angle and the other two sides. Okay. Well, the, the third angle is easiest to find, so let's start right there. Um, angle A would be equal to 180 minus... 102.3 minus 28.7. So angle A, and I'm doing this on my calculator on the side. Angle A is equal to 49 degrees. Now, um, for sides A, side A um, and side C, we're going to use this new law of sines, and you can find them in either order. Now, since I have angle B and side B, we must use those to kind of start my law of sines. So I'm going to say the sine of angle B over side B is equal to, now we pick one of the two, it doesn't matter, let's just go with A is equal to the sine of angle A divided by side little a. 
we cross multiply as this is a proportion so we have a times the sine 28.7 <clears throat> equals 27.4 sine of 49 we'll divide by the sine 28.7 and this is all calculator work from here uh, you gotta make sure that your calculator is in degree mode for this problem and I get little a to be 43.1 okay now on to side C um, I'll say this do not use Pythagorean's theorem this is not a right triangle so don't think you can just do a squared plus b squared equals c squared uh, instead we'll set up another law of sines We'll say the sine, I'm going to use B's again, 28.7 divided by 27.4 equals sine of angle C divided by side C. So we cross multiply again, we're going to be multiplying 27.4 sine 102.3 102 and we'll of course be then dividing by sine of 28.7 the answer comes out to be 55.7 Okay, uh, maybe just a quick check before we, we finish and leave the problem um, this is no way going to make sure that the answer is right, but it would be obvious to see if it's wrong or not. Um, across from the largest angle should be the longest side. And then across from the next largest angle should be the next longest side. And across from the smallest angle should be the smallest side. And you know, if I looked up and noticed that that was not true, then I would go back and start checking through my work. Another example that we can do with law of sines is when we have an angle side angle setup. So again, we're going to be given two angles to start this problem, but the location of the side is going to be right between the two angles. So we'll see kind of what that looks like. Again, I noticed that I've got an, an obtuse angle, so I'm going to draw this so that I've got an obtuse angle. So this is angle B. It measures 98 degrees. Let's just call this one A, measures 43 degrees, that leaves this to be angle C. Um, side C is right across from angle C, side C is 22. So we're left with trying to find angle C, side A, and side B. Again, I start with the angle because it's the easiest. Um, the measure of angle C is 180 minus 98 minus 43 which gives me angle C to be 39 okay. now we are ready to set up our law of sines to solve the rest of these pieces um, I'm going to choose angle C side C since it's a pair that match go together I've got to use them so I'm going to say that the sine of angle C divided by side C is equal to, let me just pick one, it doesn't matter. Let's go with the sine of angle A divided by little a. So little a is 22 sine of 43 degrees divided by sine of 39 degrees. And I get little a to be 23.8. Alright, now we're going to move on to little b. Again, I'm going to use sine of c over c set equal to sine of b over little b. So again, I cross multiply 
cross multiply involves dividing then by sine of 39. So I need 22 sine 98 divided by sine 39. And little b is 34.6. And just make a quick check and make sure the biggest angle is uh, across from the longest side, smallest side across from smallest angle, etc.